we're on the lee side of the island. You can hear the wind over on that side. I just went down hard. Like, you gotta watch this stuff. That's the problem when you don't have summer, is all this algae and lake and everything grows on the rocks. Even the dry stuff is slippery right now because the humidity in the air. But yeah, just gonna tie up the boat. I'm gonna stand there, and both feet just went out and I went straight down backwards. Thankfully, I wasn't near that post. That would have been paling me pretty good. But yeah, brand new jacket. Hopefully, I didn't put a hole in the elbow. As soon as I hit my elbow, I was like, oh man, I hope that's not broken, but it doesn't feel that bad. Yeah, I'll get the boat unloaded here. Got our own little bay. There's another boat going out there. Must be going up in the other islands. I'm gonna get a little fire going here and get some lunch. So then maybe I'll lick my bruises. We'll see. Get things all geared up. All right, let's take a little stock of our situation here. So we got our PFD, got my shotgun and the bear spray. After the other day, yeah. I'm gonna go where I can still take my stuff with me, so. That being said, I'll probably never even need it out here. But it's there. My regular rucksack, I got a couple things of water just in case I got thirsty on the way. You can always boil the lake water here pretty easy. Looked like it was gonna rain, so even if it didn't, should always have a tarp within the ridge line. And what have they got here? And by they, I mean everybody that uses this. We got a fire pit, so that's already established. Might not breathe the best, but oh well, keeps the sparks out. Chopping block. I guess you could call that firewood. It's probably going to be damp. And what is this? Hmm. Yeah. Those give me an idea. I gotta go dig out some cordage. Let's get that done. So, shotgun's all loaded up, ready to go, so I can get started here. But I don't think I've ever really mentioned my bear carry too much. I've got uh, rubber rounds. I do usually have buckshot with me, but it's not something I'd normally use for bear, honestly. I mean, when I was like 25 feet from that one last week, and if I had to use buckshot, I would still would have preferred a sl I mean, at that close, I mean, you're going to be hitting exactly where you want to hit anyways for the most part. Uh, but check this out. Hopefully that uh, you guys can see inside there. I believe the company that cast the slug is called Gallardi out of Italy. And the company that puts the rest of the uh, the round together is Challenger, based out of here in Canada. 12 gauge, 1610 feet per second. This one's in two and three quarter inch. I believe these are an ounce and an eighth, maybe an ounce. But it's a hardened lead too, like a hard cast lead. There's a bit more antimony or something in these guys. They're not soft like those foster slugs. And the wad actually travels with the projectile. So it's stabilized. I mean, this people think this stabilizes it by imparting spin. It doesn't. It comes through. That just allows it to swage through any choke you might have in your shotgun. But it's almost like a badminton uh, shuttle. That's the uh, little piece at the back here that allows it to catch drag. And as soon as that wobbles off course, it'll recenter itself. So these fly really nice. I like these. These also aren't cheap. But if you're going to bet your life on it, spend some money, right? Let's get this thing set up. So I've got my three poles for my tripod. These two are about a foot shorter than the, the center one here. Maybe two feet actually. But that's gonna come into handy for me here. I wanna show you something I've known ever since I was a little kid. You guys probably all know this too, but one of my favorite shows growing up on, uh, I think it was on YTV here in Canada. And it was originally a TV Ontario program. It's called Camp Caribou. Awesome show. But the tripod lashing, this is something I remember from Oh man, that must have been like the 80s or the 90s or something. Let's see if I can do this upside down here with the camera going. Just gonna do I'll give myself a little more here. It's gonna do a clove hitch, so make sure I got enough cord here. I'm gonna go around, so one one round turn. I'm gonna keep my finger here, make an X to go on the other side, make another round turn, and then I'm gonna put this cord right through the X and draw that tight. That's a great temporary. Now keep in mind this is only going to bond. Hmm, here's something coming through the bushes. This is only going to bind pulling in this direction. Now if you took this and wrapped this around this piece underneath here, that's called a constrictor knot. And then that's not going anywhere. So the way this guy works is you're going to go from the top of this. You're going to go under. And you're going to go over and around, over, 
under. You're basically just alternating these, and you don't need a whole lot of them either, really, for what we're going to do. I don't think I'm going to make too many. Maybe three or four. Now just excuse me for one second. I am going to go grab my shotgun and put it here because I hear something in those trees. Anyways. It could be bear. But it also could be moose, which a lot of people don't think about. Alright. So we'll go over to this side just so we don't have two knots on each side. And same thing, you can just finish this up with a clove hitch so you would come through here. I've got all... Well, not all kinds of cord. We'll do a clove hitch. Just for consistency. And then I'm going to go for a little walk and see what that is over there. Especially if I'm going to start cooking here. Well, there's also another way to make the clove hitch too that we could show you. Maybe another time, but you can basically lay up your clove hitch with a series of overlapping loops and just put it on. Yeah. So, I mean, I've seen people wind those up and do a, uh, a frapping, I guess you would call it, around these. But that'll work just fine as is. So let's get this thing up. I'm not going to stand under it the first time I try it, just because of that. You don't want that land on your head, especially with some force behind it. Let's jam this in the rock. That'll do. All right, so I've got my tarp laid out here. What I'm going to do is open it up, and I'm going to end up sticking it almost like a, I think it's like a diamond shape. It's not a square, so it's not going to be a perfect diamond. But we're going to have one corner back there, one corner up here, and two corners down there. A couple nice things about this setup is I can't really stake into the ground here because we don't have ground. It's just all rock. The other nice thing, I mean, it's not a big deal now because we're on the lee side, but the wind is coming across the island this way from the south. So this will help break the wind a bit. And normally, if you had a fire in your shelter, you'd want to have the wind coming either across this way or across that way so that it doesn't fill your shelter with smoke. But I'm just going to check and see with the fire outside the front of it, but a little ways out the front how this uh, plow type shelter is going to work so I'm going to open my tarp up it's getting to be a sad looking tarp My tripod is asymmetrical. The side you guys are on is out that way. The 
because when you put these tarps down, you're going to have like a long side and a short side. So we'll set it up like that so that they match. So that means this corner that apparently needs a new grommet is going to be at the top. It's going to be our peak. So what I'm going to do is just get this hanging up here a bit just to see where things need to go. And it looks like I could even go higher with the tripod. But if you do that before you tie this up, it's going to be harder. So if you tie your tarp now and then bring your legs in to bring it up, Oh, that's already going to be tight, but if you do it after, you're going to be reaching up there, especially if you're at a vertical disadvantage like some of us. I'm not bitter about it. And since I don't trust that eyelet, I'm going to wrap this a bit. And I'm just putting a couple half hitches and a bite could make a slippery knot or something, but whatever. That'll do. Actually, I do have quite a bit of extra tarp here. Well, better to have too much than not enough. I'm going to get another piece of cordage for the back. So nice to have your stuff hanked up. Just comes right apart. This tarp might even be a little on the big side. Well, what we'll do then... We'll just have to tie it up smaller. And to make your tarp smaller, or to actually have a different tie out anywhere else you want for various reasons, or if you end up breaking an eyelet, find a round uh, stone or a big size pine cone a uh, balled up pair of socks, anything like that can work. Anything that's going to give it mass inside but isn't going to damage your tarp. So I've already came diagonally across here, just corner to corner. So that way, I've got a nice tight line where it needs to be. So I've got my hand where I want it tied. I'm going to take my rock inside here. And now my rock is a tie-out point. So how are we going to tie that in there? Well, we're going to tie an overhand knot in the end of this line. And I'm going to pass it around this. And I'm going to tie an overhand knot past that other knot around the standing end of the line. You guys probably all know what I'm doing here. Especially if you guys watch uh, Joe Robinette, it's going to be his favorite knot here. Fair it up a little bit. Pull this point. Look at that, so it didn't even slide up against here to make a jam knot. And since I have all kinds of extra line, I am going to put a bite right here close to the end. And I'm going to do a turn. Couple of half hitches. One and two. Alright, so we've got our tent tarp loose here. And we've got this bite. What are we going to do with that? Well, Pretty good suspicion that that's the one that's going to loosen it off. Pull there, yeah. So we're going to put a bowline knot here. I guess you could actually let's make a little trucker's hitch. A couple of twists. A bite. And then this end goes in here. 
That's basically just a Marlin spike hitch now at this point. Oh yeah, that's tight. That's all we need. Another half hitch in here while we're pinching that together. All right, there's that one. And this is gonna be a little different than what you're used to seeing on YouTube. But, I don't like cutting my uh, cordage if I don't have to. I guess nobody does. So, I'm gonna put a taut line hitch here. that pretty close to the ground just to keep that tight I'm going to do the same thing over on this side now since we made that attachment point in the back this eyelet doesn't actually line up perfectly with that corner point and theoretically, we should have tied another rock in here somewhere, but just to get around that and still use the eyelets. All I'm going to do is go up one eyelet, put another one of those uh, taut line hitches in, or you can use a midshipman's hitch if that's your cup of tea, it does the same job. And then down into this eyelet. And you can already see what that's going to do. You could even just tie a bow and knot in this. Or more half hitches. So then, I'm going to take this, tighten this up. Just to be in the body here. I do. I can always put my gear in there. And that should be it. Wrap this out of the way. I can always keep that for hanging a lantern or something. There. It can rain all at once now. Maybe I'll move in. You're going to want to keep this flap on the outside too, just because that's going to sheet the water off. And we could even make a little bush craft, a bush craft clothes peg to hold that on. Yeah, maybe we'll do that in a minute. Oh, free paracord, nice. There's no sense wasting this. Somebody's already gone and damaged it. My Victorinox Huntsman. I'm just going to chop them off right. There's a bit of a knot here. That's not going to split well, so I'm going to cut it right about here. Your bushcraft knife would work fine for this too. So we got the paracord that we found. We've got our stick, we've got our bushcraft knife. I'm just going to put a couple of deeper cuts here, keep it good and away from your leg. So, what are we going to do? The end that we cut with the saw, opposite that, we're going to wrap this guy up. So, I'm going to leave this hanging out. Hopefully you guys can see that. Alrighty. I'm going to come back down to here. And I'm just going to cross over it to start wrapping. Leave that little tail sticking out. And try to wrap it pretty tight if you can. Oh, 
Oh, good. Look, there's a knot here, too. That should help us. All right. Oh, look, someone even made a toggle for it. Cute. Anyway. Once you wrap up and you've got about that much showing. Pull that through to there. Make sure that's all fared up nice. And you should, if you didn't he-man it too hard, be able to pull that through a bit. And let's see how strong their tog was. So I'm going to make marlin spike not here so we got to loop over fold on itself again see if this will hold oh, I think I might have made her backwards yep uh, that's the beauty of this is you can take it apart pretty easy too fold your loop up away from the direction the pole's coming from yeah there we go so I'm going to pull on this guy. Oh, I think that's as far as it's going to go. <clears throat> yep. And when you pull your marlin spike hitch out, it all comes apart. So, just cut that off. So we now have this wrapped up nice and tight. And what are we going to do with this here? Well, let's see. See how my hand's on the back side of my knife like that? What that's gonna do, so if you were splitting like this and slipped, that's gonna go right through the wood and get you. If it's like this, that's gonna go through the wood and stop at your hand. And you see everybody rocking it? Try moving it this way too, that sometimes will split things a little better. It doesn't need to be a great big split. There we go. So yeah, see that? That's as far as that knife can go because my hand's in there. I've got two fingers around it like that. That just goes right into my palm. So I'm gonna open that up. And that should be our bushcraft clothes peg. Let's go try it out. So we got our clothes pin. This is our sloppy improvised wrong size tarp for the structure sort of set up. But what I'm gonna do I'm going to keep this line out of the way and I'm going to pinch all these pieces of tarp together and put them inside my clothes peg. Let's see if I can do this left handed. Should have brought my wife, she's left handed. Just open that up. These are great for hanging your clothes up too, just like the namesake, I guess. There we go. Nothing like a good tight tarp, huh? There's other ways to make these tighter as well, but as far as just a simple clothes peg goes, that's about the quickest and easiest way you can make it. Well, that's our fair weather home base for the next little bit. I think if I had to use these same size poles again with this tarp, I would probably tie this corner to the grommet first and then maybe bunch it up here and tie it because then I'll have flaps that can actually even close up the front. All for another day. Let's get a fire going here. Now when I carry my axe, I like to hold it just underneath the head here with my thumb around it with a good grip and the head away from me. So if I happen to go down or fall, that's gonna hopefully go on the ground and not in my leg. So that's never fun. This is dry, dry stuff.
when you're doing this, there's no need to rush anything. Just let the axe do the work. See you guys again in here in a second. Lots of fat wood in this. Find the driest ones here. Nice thing with summertime is you can usually get these guys back pretty easy. They don't disappear in the snow. But your wood chips that you knock out, use those to insulate the base of your fire. Keep all that cold and moisture off of it. That's one thing that'll make a bad start to your fire is having a bad lay at the bottom of it. Doesn't need to be pretty. Just needs to work, right? I think we're going to lay ours. Hopefully the air will come through this way alright because, well actually you know what, we've got a bit of a hole here. So I'm going to build it up this way. Way the air can go through and feed it. Okay, so our fire lay is ready. We've got some feather sticks, we've got our chips for the bottom. This was off a of dead birch, and it's even a little damp, but this stuff will still burn well when it's wet, which is good because this stuff is super damp, so I'm not extremely hopeful for it. I've got a little chunk of fat wood here that I might, uh, you know what, I'll save that. If we get the birch bark, we should be okay. I'm going to have everything ready to go to put on top. Get all my smalls here. And normally I'd knock down a dead tree, but understandably there's nothing on this island because it's pretty popular. So a fella could bring his own next time. Still getting used to this knife. There we go. I put a new edge on the back of it. Give that as much time to dry out as we can. Woo! Definitely hot. Funny thing, fire. Our little guys, just kind of helter skelter everywhere. And these bigger ones. Hopefully, that birch bark burns long enough to dry the stuff out enough to catch. Well, it sounds like the wood's going too. That's good. A little bit bigger stuff here.
considering how damp that wood is, you got the makings of a pretty good little hunter trapper fire there. I don't think the ants like their house being burned up, but that's the circle of life sometimes, I guess. Let's get some coffee going. I was gonna have tea, but I had coffee in my bags. So that's what we're having. The $14 bush pot's going strong still. Just gonna make sure you cool off before you put it back in here because when it's hot, it deforms a little easy. Get all the cat hair out of it. Well guys, I've just been sitting here watching the old bush TV, living in comfort. Look at this, how many of you guys have tarp shelters with a chair in them? Can't take any credit for that though, this place has two chairs here all the time, so. If it was my own spot, I'd make some bushcraft chairs and stuff, but that's where I ended up today, so that's what I use. That firewood that was down here, I got one piece left to move. I stuck them underneath that spruce tree, hopefully they'll somewhat dry out, or at least not get any wetter. We did have some rain come in from behind me there, and yeah, chair worked great. Tarp worked great. Fire's going good. Boat's still tied up. Can't complain. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but there's an old cabin right over there. It's all boarded up. Maybe I'll take the boat over there on the way out. We'll see. Let's get some chili going. The nice thing with a hunter-trapper fire is you don't usually even need that grate. I mean, that's another thing that's uh, here on the island, so I just made use of it. My fire was going down a bit. This isn't the best wood I've seen for burning in whole rounds. But yeah, I did have it going for quite a while. I just edited the first half of the video here on my phone, so I let things kind of burn to a dull roar for a bit until I can pick it up again. But for the most part, once you get a fire going in the middle of these guys, they're pretty self-sustaining. Normally if that was a little closer and you had a fire down the bottom, the two logs were feeding off each other so the heat radiating off one side helps the other burn and vice versa. And the way you go, you've got heat, but you can usually even just put your pot, as a matter of fact, I don't burn myself here, you could even put your pot down there. See how hot that is if that catches or not. Uh, it's starting to. That might be a good temperature for cooking. Yeah, we'll do the chili down that end. Old school. I already had all of my uh, coffee, so let's see how that stays. And then you could have like a bigger opening. So your wind, I mean this rock's in a bad spot, but it's kind of hard. I should have checked that before I chopped these at length. But your wind would normally come in the open side, and you can adjust it like a damper to how much wind you let through and how much heat you make. But you can have a pot boiling here. You can have a frying pan making up some other stuff over here. You can have a hash going or some bannock. It's probably one of my favorite fire lays I've used since I was a kid. I could have really ate two cans of this. Love this stuff. Stag Southwest Chipotle Chicken Chili or something along those lines. Just warm yet.
Let's see how this grub looks. A little hot. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get that in me. See you guys after lunch. Well, almost supper time now. Thank you, Father, for another delicious meal and a great place to have it. In Jesus' name, amen. Time for some tucker. Mm -mm -mm. You can't beat chili. Well, folks, I'm sad to say that did not last long. Just too bad. I was hoping it would last for a while. So good. So this is the tip of that willow that we made our clothes peg out of. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my knife and just nip this off so I get a good handful of them. We well, probably break it with your hand, too. Just barehand it. Pardon me. Oh, that's the chili coming. Fill this with water down at the lake here and scrub it out. And once it's rinsed out real well, put some more water in it. Get another boil on the go here because I've got... A special treat for my wife so you guys will be able to see how she looks after me we'll see you in a second Time to go indoors. Well, my phone's just about dead and I don't have one of them little portable power thingies, but let me tell you, just in case this dies on you. How the rest of the day is going here. I got some cherries that barely made the boat trip over. It looked like they're turned into preserves. And this. Oh yeah, boy. That is some homemade banana bread that my wife made. My lovely wife. That I was thinking of toasting on the fire, but we'll see. It's raining pretty good now. Got some hot coffee. Got all my junk in here. all my jank so I think I'll probably sign off here because all you're gonna see is me tearing all this stuff down and loading the boat up 
may or may not rain for the rest of the day now, so I'll probably do a little scramble to get out of here. So yeah, we'll see you guys soon here for another episode of Bushcraft North of 60 in Canada's Northwest Territories. Take care.